Hey guys, Ken here from the Retro Toys Capes channel in Malaysia. Join me on the channel today as I take a look at the new Buzzsaw action figure from Super 7's Silverhawks Ultimates Wave 1. And oh man, he is looking super massive. Check this out. Now this has been a very long awaited release for me personally and also I'm sure for diehard Silverhawks fans out there. Part 1 of the video is where I'll take an in-depth look at the figure while part 2 coming later will focus on the accessories. On the back, you get the character illustration that's taken straight from the animation. From a distance, it kind of looks like a pair of sinister inhuman eyes staring through the chrome. Pause the screen right now so you guys can take a look at Buzzsaw's bio. You know the chrome of these boxes are fantastic obviously. I do wish they had used individual colour schemes for the characters and not just red, okay not just monster red for everything. By the way, these Super 7 packages are gorgeous but they will take up a lot of storage space. Also, these characters rarely come in similar shaped boxes. Buzzsaw's box is in fact the same size as that of the Armored Monster. Man, just look at this guy, okay? He's just looking immense. I also want to give a shout out to Psycholac who is also from Malaysia and who has his own YouTube channel. He had a video out showcasing his take on Buzzsaw a few days ago. I look forward to seeing other reviews as well from the rest of the community. Now, let's get down to slicing and dicing with the steel cutting criminal. Out of the package and fully posed, Buzzsaw looks super imposing. I do wish they went with darker paint apps for the entire figure though, okay? Because truthfully, he is looking pale. Okay, he's looking pretty pale, okay? Now, the details on his face look good up close. But as I said, he needs some heavier paint wash, especially around the eyes, I think. The blade that's on his head here is stationary. The one that comes with the alternate head duster, we're going to check that out in part two. Now, you do get some awesome spinning blades here on both shoulders, though. Okay, check this out, man. Yeah, man, awesome, man. <laughs> Wasn't expecting these blades to turn, okay, but they do, all right? Now, let me just get this out of the way, okay? You can't rotate these arms straight up to the side, all right? So don't even try. Okay. <laughs> and look, that severely limits some cool articulation points, for sure. But I guess they had to do it that way to incorporate the turning blades on his shoulder pads, all right? What are you going to do? Okay, they have to have that action gimmick in there. And I guess it's a compromise, okay? Anyway, this is only like the second buzzsaw figure that will be made in history. And the vintage figure was practically a brick by comparison. Now, you can move his entire arm up and down smoothly and just like bring it down, okay? In like one swift striking motion, yeah. And there's also an upper bicep turn. This thing moves about very smoothly. You get a giant ball there, all right, where his elbow is, okay? And you do get a bend there. This one's nice and tight, good range of movement. And there's also movement there at this huge arm attachment that houses his blade. This section here turns very smoothly. Now, those giant mechanical claw hands, they turn and bend. And there's a giant spinning blade here as well, all right? There's just so much functionality in this figure. On the right side, you get all of the same articulation. Everything holds up really well. Nothing feels loose, okay? And you know what? In total, this whole figure comes with four large spinning blades, okay? That, my friends, is a legit action feature, okay? I mean, the package could have just said, you know, it could have had a blurb that read, blades really spin. Now that huge blocky chest compartment area there, I mean, that's like the standout section of this whole figure. There's no articulation there though, but he does turn at the waist very smoothly. And as you work your way down, he's got some rocking ball joint movement there at the hips. All right, check this out, okay? This guy can do some serious high flying kicks, okay? <laughs> That's right, okay. I feel that you know, the entire structure of this figure, I mean, he's got pretty skinny legs, you know, but you know, that's basically how Buzzsaw was, all right? But yeah, there's a lot of articulation here. There's like upper thigh movement, all right? And he's also got a bend there at the knee, okay? There's a lot that you can do, you know, from the waist down with this figure, okay? More so than you ever could with the 80s version of him. And further down, okay, he's got ankle movement as well. Uh, not a lot. Okay, but basically, you just really need this guy to be able to stand up. And I actually found that while posing him, um, that can be a little bit of a challenge. <laughs> okay, you really do probably have to find that sweet spot, okay, when getting this guy posed. But it's not impossible, okay. I'm going to show you some photos after this, okay, some shots of him, like standing up in various different poses. It is possible. 
Okay, let's get down to some comparisons here. First up, we've got the original bus saw from 1987. As you can see, this thing was a completely different construct, a different color, a different company, okay? They basically didn't even bother to go the animation accurate route and they got away with it, all right? Somehow, okay? Next up, we've got bus saw next to his boss, Monster. These two guys are like the biggest figures, okay, in series one. Uh, probably from Wave 2 as well, I think. Yeah, you know, I mean, these guys are just massive. Look at the size of them, okay? I, you know, I mean, honestly, I did not possibly think that Buzzsaw could be this big, but apparently he's supposed to be. Next up, we've got him next to the Wave 1 Quicksilver, okay? The very divisive Quicksilver figure, right? But I like it, right? I mean, I still do. And you know what? <laughs> you can see the size comparison between both these guys, okay? Easily, okay. I mean, Buzzsaw is gonna just slice this guy straight out of the sky, okay. You know what? He's gonna get his wings clipped, that's for sure. Okay, um, then we've got him here next to Doc Terror from Centurions. Actually, I don't know why, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, they're both mechanical guys from the 80s and uh, they both had their roots in Kenner figures, so yeah, I mean, basically, you know, you get a size comparison here, a feel for what this figure is. He's massive, okay? One thing I will have to say is just that I think in closing thoughts when I'm just talking about the figure alone, um, I kind of feel that, you know, it's a bit disappointing that the quality of the materials that are put into the figure, all right, the quality of the materials I felt should have been harder plastic, okay? Not this soft vinyl feel, right? It's like the whole figure has got this very soft vinyl feel to it and uh, it really doesn't hold up, especially when you consider the fact that he's top heavy and the legs are pretty skinny. And, uh, you know, the feet at some moments, you'll notice, you know, it probably doesn't really get him standing up all too well, even though you can, as you can see from the shots here. But I just feel that this entire figure kind of feels like a giant eraser, okay? Like a huge rubber of some kind, right? The kind that you used to, you know, rub shit off the paper. Okay, you know, when it's written in pencil and stuff like that. Because it's like, when you look at this ankle here, I mean, like the whole foot area here. You can see this, like, flakes here. Um, this is stuff that's like, you know, being scraped off. Okay, I don't think I did it. You know, I think it came out of the package looking like this. Okay, but you kind of get the impression that if you were to rub this against something, uh, like parts of the figure against something, okay, it would just like scrape off. All right? That's the feeling I get, all right, holding this thing. I'm not really sure. I mean, is Super 7 stuff usually like this? And, you know, they did do those Transformers figures. I think they did that Optimus Prime figure that came with the basketball. I don't know if any of you guys got that one. Probably the material for that would have been the same as this. I'm not sure. I just feel that a cyborg-like, you know, robotic character such as this should have really been, you know, made out of, like, harder plastic, okay? Or, like, a mixture of, you know, the vinyl stuff, you know, the flexible stuff but just a little bit more harder plastic if that was possible. The design of this figure looks great, okay? I think the translation to an action figure, you know, from the cartoon, I think it's just, you know, fantastic, okay? On display, man, this guy is just gonna pop, okay? However, like I said, the materials that were put into the action figure, I feel that, you know, they could have been better, definitely, right? But we'll check out more of this figure in part two when we scope out the accessories. Join me for that one in the meantime. Just help to share out this video, get it as many likes as possible, comment below, get it out there. Okay, every bit of interaction helps to get these videos out there and into the public and to get some momentum going. I don't get sponsorship for any of these videos and I put them out there, but I hope to get the support of the community to keep this thing going. Back me up on Patreon, support me on YouTube memberships, okay? If you like what you see, help me to deliver more of it to you. And guys, thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for part two. I'm going to get it up. Okay, meantime, share this video out and I'll catch you guys again real soon with more content. Thank you and take care out there.